Hi, welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal, Senior Managing Director of Equities here at Simpler Trading with your Weekly Edge show for December 23rd. First up, as always, we're going to take a look at where we closed the markets and whether we are below potential resistance, where support might be, and what we can look out for going into next week and beyond. We're also going to take a look at some of the headline news that drove price action. It was a rather busy week last week, and we'll look quite closely at some of that data and how it impacted the markets. Also, viewer question of the week, and this week it's all about how several of these companies that reported earnings really drove price action, and we'll talk about how that trickled out within their respective industry groups as well. So first up here with some of that data last week that was released, first up, consumer confidence came in at an eight-month high, which was rather surprising. Despite high inflation, consumers did exhibit some confidence. Also, weekly jobless claims inched a little bit higher, not very much in the way of a needle-moving number, but we do want those jobless claims to remain elevated because the Federal Reserve is all about reducing employment and hence reducing spending and therefore inflation. We also had U.S. GDP and it was revised upward quite a bit for the third quarter and it was all about consumer spending pushing that higher and that is not what the Fed wants to see, both in the way of consumer spending as well as an expanding economy. So that gave pause to the markets. And then also core personal consumption expenditures, that's PCE. It's a very closely watched inflation data point for the Federal Reserve. And it did come in today, Friday, and it showed that inflation is cooling slightly, not enough to get anyone overly excited, but certainly headed in the right direction. Also, durable goods orders did drop as the economy continues to show some signs of slowing, which is not truly in line with that GDP number. However, it is a backdrop number to keep in mind. And next week, the economic calendar is really light as we head into this last week of the year, so not a whole lot to report there. Let's go ahead and take a look where did the markets close for the week. And here we are with the daily price chart of the S&P 500 index, a couple of highly relevant points to be noting. That is the position of the S&P relative to this 50-day simple moving average. During a normally bullish phase in the markets, the index will find support not only above this 50-day, but above each of its moving averages, which then allows the index to continue to trade higher. So the fact that we remain below this 50-day moving average is not constructive. This 10, 21, and 200-day moving averages are now upside resistance by way of any potential reversal of this current downtrend. We also have negative momentum with that RSI below 50 and trending lower. Likewise with the stochastics. Now of note, we are coming out of an oversold position. This is a faster moving momentum indicator that got down here below 30. So we may see a little bit of a rally into year end. However, we will need to see the index break above these moving averages before getting constructive on prospects for the broader markets. From here, let's take a look at the underlying ETFs and those sectors that are within the S&P 500. This is a two-month daily price chart view. I've gone ahead and added an RSI. That's a relative strength indicator. Sort of the groups by descending order. So up here in the forefront are your relative outperformers in the way of sectors in the S&P 500. And then lower here in the bottom right quartile are your weaker areas. The reason to really pay close attention to this is because if you are in the market, you want to make sure that you're represented in these stronger areas. Also, depending on which sectors are up here, will really be telling as it relates to investor sentiment. And then also sector rotation. 
Ideally, you want to be on the lookout for industry groups that are in this weaker area as they potentially begin to progress up to the forefront. So a couple of items of note here is we have utilities, staples, and healthcare up here at the forefront, indicating a more defensive stance among investors. And from here, we can take a look at a rotation that did shape up, and that is energy. The energy sector had been down here languishing in this lower, weaker quartile. Last week, it was the top performing sector up 3%. Let's take a look at the chart for XLE, and you'll see that it is firming up quite nicely. We have the in sector that hit a near-term low here earlier this month, and now we have a higher low that is constructive. We also have the RSI now in positive territory, and this MACD with the black line up through the red. The last piece of the puzzle as it relates to turning positive would be XLE breaking back above this 50 day simple moving average, but a nice rotation up here into the forefront with some very interesting underlying stocks within energy that are really looking quite interesting. From here on that weaker front down here in the bottom, we can see technology and consumer discretionary both areas outperforming again this week. And weakness in this area, these are generally high growth areas and it is all about recessionary fears. There is one other factor that's also pushing these growth stocks down as well, which I'll share with you as we move forward. And then also I'd like to share with you some ETFs that are really powerful as far as helping keeping you on top of what is the backdrop for these markets, what's shaping movement beneath the surface. So let's take a look at some of these ETFs that are really telling as it relates to the markets. So again, strength to weakness up here at the forefront, we can see gold holding in really quite well. And also the outside momentum indicators are positive for GLD, the ETF for gold stocks. And gold does have a predisposition to fare well during a recessionary period. Also up here in the forefront is TNX, and that's the yield on that 10-year treasury. And you can see it's beginning to tick higher here. I'll share with you the impact that that has had on the markets as well. Not good for growth stocks. And then also up here, biotech names remain in the forefront. However, not as strong as I'd like to see. This is IBB, the NASDAQ biotech ETF, negative momentum here with the RSI, and your MACD poised to also turn negative. So also, we do want to be aware, again, of these weaker areas and potentially why. So down here, we can see that semiconductor stocks are really underperforming, and this is a pretty big area among technology and this is SOXX, negative RSI, negative MACD, and it has now broken below this 50-day simple moving average, certainly not an area that you want to have any kind of heavy weighting at this point in time. And then also down here at this lower quartile are small cap stocks. They were down not a whole lot last week, but the group overall remains below each of these moving averages with no negative momentum there as well. In the beginning stages of a new bull cycle, you will see small caps come into favor, but not so at this time. Another area that I did want to share with you and point out is the fact that we talked about energy stocks on the rise, and we are seeing a little bit, certainly, of stabilization among crude oil pricing. And this is Brent crude now at $81, still well low below levels that we've seen earlier this year. However, there were rumors today that Russia may reduce their oil output dramatically, which is one of the reasons that these energy stocks were given a nice boost. So from here, I do want to share with you the impact that we talked about higher interest rates that are shaping up with that 10-year yield now up around 3.8%. This is a correlated chart that shows you the NASDAQ composite up here with these candlestick bars. And then the single line is the yield 
on that 10 year treasury. So as interest rates rise, you can see the clear cut reaction with this high growth NASDAQ index. So as the markets progress, this is a daily chart and we're taking us back to the end of last year to current. And we can see as those NAS as interest rates decline, the NASDAQ will tend to rise. And likewise, as interest rates increase, you will see a drop. So at this point in time, we are in that phase where interest rates are beginning to ascend. And likewise, we are seeing that NASDAQ continue to deteriorate. So that certainly is one of the drivers. From here, let's talk about earnings because for a lot of companies, their earnings reports have already come through, but there were several bellwether, very important companies that did report last week. First up, let's take a look at Nike. They reported earnings on Wednesday. We can see this big gap up. The stock was up double digit, very heavy volume and the outside momentum remaining in positive territory. Nike reported earnings that were ahead of estimates and also guided growth prospects higher, which was very encouraging. But one impact that you will see, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up what's called a full quote and share with you the sub-industry group that Nike is a part of, and that is footwear. So when you see a large renowned company in a particular industry group report strong numbers, oftentimes you will see other stocks in that same industry group post bullish behavior. So let's take a look. I have two examples of footwear companies. Nike, of course, is athletic wear. So we can take a look at Deckers, which is known for their Ugg boots, but they also have a very vibrant sneaker business. And here we are with D-E-C-K gapping up in line with Nike. This black line up through the red indicates that this momentum, this pullback is poised to reverse into an uptrend. I'm on the lookout for a $400 base breakout with positive RSI. One other stock in this footwear space is a company that is on my MEM Edge suggested holdings list. It's a very short list, but this stock made it. It's Crocs. C-R-O-X, and it too had a nice move upward. It was the second highest performer in footwear on Wednesday outside of Nike, up about 8%. Momentum has remained upward subsequent to that nice move. And then again, we have that black line up through the red as Crocs is poised to enter into an uptrend and a base breakout here at 105. So as we head into this last week of note, we will want to continue to pay attention to interest rates now knowing the impact that it has on these higher growth areas. And then also we want to pay attention to those more defensive areas and see if they do remain up there at the forefront. And lastly, keep your eye on that energy group as it is poised to turn positive. Everyone have a great holiday week and I will see you in the new year. Hey, Mary Ellen here with Simpler Trading. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and leave comments below. And if you'd like to be notified to future videos, you can hit that bell icon and subscribe. Don't leave without subscribing to my MEM Edge bi-weekly report. I do have a special trial offer. And for those who'd like to learn about trading live with us, you can go ahead to simplertrading.com to learn more.